My name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And the name of our show today is Educating the Public about MWRDGC, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And as my guest, I have Allison Ford. She's a public and intergovernment affair officer at the district. Thank you for being on the show, Allison. And also, as my guest, I have Sheila Porter. She's a senior public affairs specialist. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for having us. Good to now, be here. Before we start, I want to could you explain about yourself, uh, Allison? Oh, sure. Your background. Love talking about myself. <laughs> So I'm originally from Munster, Indiana, graduated from Indiana University with a bachelor's of science in public health. And then I received my master's degree from University of Chicago in social service administration. And so my career was based on writing communications and government. I worked for the Illinois State Treasurer for many years, the Indiana Department of Environmental Management for four years before I found the district in 2011, and I've been here ever since. <laughs> Very good. And you, uh, Sheila? Well, uh, my background is marketing and public affairs. I've been doing it for about 20 years now. And um, before I came to the district, I actually worked for the Illinois Department of Public Health. I served there for about a year. And I have been with the district this month, actually makes, or this year makes five years for me. And I've been enjoying it, every moment of it. Yes, and, and we're very fortunate to have two qualified people in the Public Affairs Department to give the information to the public uh, here in Cook County about what the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago does. It's a very important agency because we protect the health and welfare of the public here in Cook County especially the epidemic that we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. Very important for our two people here in public affairs to educate the public during this epidemic crisis that we're facing and how they're going to educate. Very important. Uh, they're going to educate the kids and the public on what we do. Yes. That's right. That's what the public affairs department does. So we have multiple outlets for educating all ages, beginning with, and I like to talk before COVID, we did a tremendous amount of community outreach, mm -hmm. staffing booths, mm -hmm. going into communities, giving away literature that we create in house, uh, having giveaways for rain barrels and trees to retain stormwater. Yes. We did presentations. We go to school. Sheila will talk more about that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have tours. We had live tours of all of our facilities. We operate seven wastewater treatment plants, and we have tunnel and reservoir infrastructure, and we would have hundreds of guests from around the world. And so, of course, we are having to pivot and to create a whole virtual experience for the public. In addition, we have a robust social media plan. We do photo, we create videos, we actually have drone operators. They're out today at the Calumet plant with goats. The goats are <laughs> <Yeah>. eating prairies. <laughs> and so we are trying to figure out our new reality and how we are adapting. Yes, and what, what Elsa mentioned is that at the Water Reclamation District, we're well known throughout the world. And the reason why we're well known throughout the world is because we have experts in different fields in treating wastewater. You know, and Allison, a lot of people say, what is wastewater? You know, you get up in the morning, mm -hmm. you wash your hands, you take a bath, you brush your teeth, the water that you're using goes into down into your uh, pipes in your house, out to a local sewer. From the local sewer, it goes into the, uh, uh, our interceptor sewers that goes into the wastewater plants. And we treat it. But, uh, you know, you also eat and drink, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after you eat and drink, what do you do? What do they do, Allison and Sheila? They poop and pee, and that's yeah. what we treat, too. <laughs> yeah. right. We treat an average of 500 tons of human waste at the district, and we are the expert. Uh, uh, Sheila, tell me about your role. At the 
Okay, so, so my role, I'm pretty much uh, Allison's um, right-hand man, so to say, for lack of better words. And what I do is I um, help with a lot of the operations in the department. So I try to make sure that, you know, we're on top of our game with social media. I do a lot of, I help with a lot of the scheduling of some of the social media posts that have to do with community outreach. I um, assist with a lot of the projects that are going on in our department. So we have a ton of things going on all the time. People don't know we're <laughs> probably one of the most busiest departments in the uh, agency, you know, and so I work a lot with the marketing, public affairs, uh, communications. I help with some of the communication plans that Allison implements. Um, I work with the staff to make sure that they understand, you know, what their role is in a particular project. So, you know, um, it takes more than one person to get things done. One of the things about our department is we're not that type of department where, um, you get a project done that day. A lot of the work that we do is done over time and it takes a whole team to do what we do. So I help Allison help get all those pieces together from whatever department we have to work with to whatever staff person is working on a project. That's kind of my role there. Yeah, that's true because, you know, at the Water Reclamation District, we have various departments. Mm -hmm. We have engineering department, maintenance operations department, uh, uh, research department, uh, we have uh, 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 protecting our waterways. I mean, I have about 10 or 15 different things that we're doing. And it's all towards protecting the health and welfare of the public. We try to do it on prevention before it gets out. Mm -hmm. And this virus that we're facing right now, it's out there. Yes. It's out there, but our job is to prevent. Because if, when that virus comes, into our system, it's killed. We, we die because there's no host. The way we treat wastewater is that we kill the virus, Allison and Sheila, mm -hmm. that it doesn't spread. Now, uh, explain some of the departments that you do. Well, some, what's most important to us are our departments, maintenance and operations, human resources. We're always trying to educate the public to register on our website mm -hmm. to apply for jobs and to be notified of job opportunities. Uh, the engineering department may be constructing something that the public would find interesting. So we'll send a photographer or a videographer to go out and capture those moments so we could share them on our website or Facebook, Twitter, wherever, because we're always trying to show what we do. We can. Talk about it all we want, but mm -hmm. you want to see it. And you want to see video and photos. We have historical photo archives mm -hmm. that we post every day, and hundreds of people are viewing those photos. And one of the most important things is to remember is we are not the city of Chicago right. Department <laughs> right. of right. Water <laughs> Management. We do not yes. treat <laughs> drinking water. That's what Commissioner Avila was talking about. Yes. We treat used water. Any water that is used comes to us, so mm -hmm. you're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned, Allison, that uh, our name, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District yes. of Greater Chicago. When we say Greater Chicago, they think we're with the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned we're not. We're a separate agency mm -hmm. that was incorporated over 100 years ago to protect the health and welfare of the public. Yes. Right, Sheila? Right, and I will, I will add that we help protect your drinking water, <laughs> but we don't treat it. And Lake Michigan is your drinking water for all of you who do not know, but I'm sure most of you know because we're out and about sharing that information often. Yeah, and, and what else it means that when we protect Lake Michigan is that we monitor that no toxic chemicals or pollution goes into Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. That's one of our duties, that we make sure that nothing goes into Lake Michigan so when they treat wastewater, they treat it and you don't have to worry about drinking the water here in the city of Chicago. Right, Allison? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, well, what other departments do you do, Allison? You, you mentioned engineering. Engineer, uh, so, mm, uh, Maintenance and operations, mm -hmm. they are the heart and soul of the Water Reclamation District. They are processing your wastewater every day. Mm -hmm. And think about when it rains, we have a lot more water coming to us. Yes. And rainy days, we strongly encourage you to not use your water. Do not wash your dishes. Do not take a shower if you can 
if you can stand it. Mm -hmm. For example, today is supposed to be a rainy day, so now is a good time to not use water because mm -hmm. you want to reserve that space in the sewer system. Because yes. remember, everything's coming to us. You, if you're washing your uh, dishes and it's raining, that's double the load that's mm -hmm. coming to us. Mm -hmm. And we call them overflow action alerts in partnership with the Sh Friends of the Chicago River. So think about whenever it rains, don't use your water. Mm -hmm. that, and, and that's true. And I want to add anything that we're talking about today, especially with Overflow Action Day, uh, our community outreach, you can visit our website. We encourage you to visit our website at mwrd.org, and you can learn all about this. You can learn how to sign up for CSO Action Alerts or Overflow Days and ac Overflow Actions Alerts. Uh, yes, and, and uh, I'd like to remember, uh, remind the public that we do not own the local source. Like in the city of Chicago, they own the local source and they're in charge mm -hmm. of their stormwater management. We're in charge with every suburban outside of the city of Chicago, 100, about 125 municipalities, we're in charge of stormwater. One inch of rain in Cook County is 15 billion gallons. Mm -hmm. 15 billion gallons. So when it rains, uh, like one or two or three inches, Right now we're having intense rain, and if it falls down too fast for a short period of time, we're going to have uh, flooded uh, overflows. Mm -hmm. And when they say CSO, it's combined sewer overflows because there's about 55 communities here in Cook County that have combined sewers where the stormwater and the wastewater goes into the same system. The other systems are separate. Stormwater and the wastewater goes in separate pipes. Yeah. And we have educational materials. We like to teach the children when they're young mm -hmm. so they can appreciate the value of water. We're very fortunate to live near Lake Michigan, one of the Great Lakes, and the younger the students are, the more likely they'll have an appreciation. So we have a robust mm -hmm. uh, agenda for children. Yes, yes. Educational materials. Yeah, right on our website. Right take on our a, website. Take Gains. a look at some of that material, yes. Yeah, right. explain some of the material to Sheila. Okay, so so you know, we we deal with K through 12. We also I don't want to leave out our high, our college students, but we also but um, for the most part right now we have um, materials for our K through through 12 audience. We've got puzzles. We've got um, we've got cards. We've got fact sheets. We've got all kinds of coloring books. And right now we're working on a storybook. We can't reveal that right now. <laughs> but the whole idea is to have this material available for our young audience so that they can learn about the importance of what we do, how they impact what we do, and what can they do to help their families understand their impact on our work, if that makes sense. But it's all on our website. You can check it out in our community education uh, materials section. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, our song, we opened up with the song, Kids for Saving the Planet. Mm -hmm. Now, the kids are going to save the planet, but what Allison and Sheila is doing, they're educating the kids mm -hmm. on how to save the planet. Mm -hmm. Because, let's face it, they're going to have to learn how to save the planet, especially in the water environment. Yes. Uh, uh, this is God's country. We're in the Chicagoland area. It's God's country because why? We have Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. This is our resource for drinking water. You know, uh, God made our body a uh, majority of water, 65% mm -hmm. of water. We need water to live. Yeah. And we're very fortunate to have Lake Michigan. And as Sheila mentioned, that we're not in charge of the filtration plant, mm -hmm. but we're in charge of protecting Lake Michigan. And we strongly encourage homeschooling parents right now, teachers, to call us check our website out or call us because mm -hmm. we have the ability to schedule virtual tours, presentations online, and we're doing more and more of those each day. We don't want to give an extra burden to anybody. We want to be helpful. Yeah. So we have, we realized we had to pivot and figure out another way of doing things. So we're at 312-751. Whatever. 6633. 6633. Six, three. <laughs> and then the website? MWRD.org. Yes, and uh, Sheila or Allison will get the proper information to you. You know, Allison, I meant, I'm glad you mentioned about homeschooling. 
You know, uh, uh, they used to, uh, uh, six months ago, uh, kids used to go to school. Mm -hmm. And the homeschooling kids didn't go to school. Now, you got a lot of kids not even going to go to school. Right. They're virtually. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what Allison and Sheila want to do. They want to educate the kids in this epidemic virtually now because yes. that's what we're facing. And that's what they're um, organizing right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the, how to educate the kids virtually mm -hmm. and also give uh, talks virtually, yes. right? Explain some of the talks that you gave. I remember I, I read on the newsletter that you gave a virtual tour to some college. Was that in Texas or... Uh, uh, we anybody who asks us for a tour, yeah. we have we've already created a video mm -hmm. of a couple of our plants. So that's we could show that or provide the link to that. Yeah. But we have our staff; they'll sit in front of their computer. We have photos to show in the background. It's almost an actual better experience. I'm finding out because you can hear better mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're at the plants. It's very loud, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to hear. Yeah, but. I, we may keep doing this. Oh. You know, once mm -hmm. COVID ends, it will end. We may have a combination of both. We can offer the virtual experience or we can offer in-person tours at that time. Nice. Yeah. And I will add that um, one of the positive things I think that has come out of this is that by way of the, because we can provide a more virtual experience for the public, we're able to extend our reach further. Like for some of those who or maybe they may know, because we're world known, yes. the MWRD, really. We have people coming in from China, from India, uh, from all over the world wanting to tour our plants. But then you have those who hear about it but are unable to actually come to the plant. So one of the benefits that we see from our virtual experience is that uh, we're able to promote it more to people to actually be able to click a link and join us in these virtual experiences. At least that's what we're working toward. That's one of the benefits or one of the good things that we see that is coming out of this. And, and that's true. You know, uh, uh, as they mentioned, Allison and Sheila mentioned that very few people know about our agency. When you flush that toilet, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. You know, you just flush that toilet and you don't think a word goes to and you don't think how it's treated and at the end of it, what product they make. Mm -hmm. And the product that they make, we call it, what do we call Bio it? Biosol. Biosol. Bio <laughs> yes. Yeah. We also have a value-added product called compost. Mm -hmm. That program is thriving right now. We have piles at the plants and people are coming to pick them up. Bring your own bucket, bring your own <laughs> shovel, go on our website and find a map to the location. No appointment needed. No appointment. Just show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and this compost is exceptional quality. Mm -hmm. Why go to a uh, home supply store and pay about well, $12 for what a 20 pound bag of compost when you could pick them up free mm -hmm. at our plant, uh, at the Stickney plant. They could go up, up there in Stickney, pick up the, uh, the compost uh, there. Uh, if it's a large order, uh, I think they truck it also. We also deliver. Yeah. So once again, our website is a handy tool. Mm -hmm. a 10 cubic yards, that's a dump truck full or more, will be delivered to you. So it's just a matter of going on our website and being able to accommodate 10 cubic yards. That's a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and they distribute to whom, Sheila? Uh, we can distribute it to uh, park districts, and um, on s some we can distribute to homes as well, but I encourage you to visit our website for all the details and the application. Yeah, you know, because uh, every day we treat on every about 500 tons mm -hmm. of it, 500 tons of biosol that we move out. And, and we give it to farmers. Mm -hmm. Farmers love our biosolids because they yield more per acre in crops mm. than other fertilizer. Just think of it. More yield per acre. Because why? They have more nutrients in our biosolids for them to grow the crops. So they love your waste. It's <laughs> a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now uh, Allison, you mentioned we got seven plants, right? We do. Yeah. Where are they located at? Oh, it's a pop quiz. <laughs> I thought you said no pop quizzes. <laughs> so the Calumet plant is in Chicago. 
on a hundred and thirty. Yeah, yeah, that's the south side. Mm -hmm. Then we have the O'Brien plant, which used to be called the North Side plant, which is in Skokie. Then we have the Kiri plant, which is in Des Plaines. We have the Egan plant, which is in Schaumburg. Then we have the smaller plants, which are Hanover Park and Lamont. Yes, seven plants, guys, to handle all your waste, all your human waste there. And, and uh, it runs very efficiently. And as they mentioned, we have different departments, but the main department is maintenance operation of treating human waste. And we have fact sheets for each one of these plants. Mm -hmm on the website. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Now, now uh, Sheila, uh, what else are you working in your department to educate the kids? Because that's, as I mentioned, who's going to save the planet? The kids. Well, yeah, the kids are our future after all. So um, we're always working on something in our department. Um, some of the um, education programs that have been going on now is one of them is the uh, Monarch Project. And that's a partnership that we um, tagged along with from the um, Monarch Project, the, the Illinois Monarch Project. And we, the reason why we feel like this is a good fit for us and this is a good education for, um, for young, um, young students is because one of the things that we like to do is we promote native plants. And we promote native plants because they work so well here throughout Illinois and throughout Cook County. They have a very long root system that absorbs water and that's one of the main things that we talk about in our education to the public and to the students. And who does doesn't love butterflies so <laughs> partnering up with that project makes so much sense because of the milkweed that the butterflies need to survive uh, their sole food source for their baby for their caterpillars or uh, the Monarch Caterpillars, and so that's one of the projects that we're working on. We've been able to uh, reach a lot of people through social media. Uh, normally, we would be out and about in the community, as you know, and we would be handing out our beautiful uh, milkweed seed packets with education for the students there as well. Um, but for now, we're, we're working with our website, so if they want to go to our website, we have a fun quiz on there for students. We also have some fun facts about the butterflies and their habitat. And then some of the other things that we're educating the students about is water conservation. We're talking to them about, um, again, stormwater management and what role they play. And we also talk about something called water wellness, which has to do with uh, keeping debris and other contaminants out of the waterway. So th those are things that we're constantly working on. And we're also, as I mentioned earlier, we're working on new material, new virtual material and new uh, literature that we can use as well as the new school year comes on board. And, and you know what? And also they had the Public Affairs Department. And Sheila, you did an excellent job, and you too, Allison, on providing uh, coloring books to the kids yeah. that uh, they'll color some type of environmental water mm -hmm. uh, activity going on. And, but on the bottom... And that's why I love, on the bottom of it, it explains yes. everything. It, you know, there, you have one book that explains about how the district was formed, which is very good because it's knowledge. It gives the kids a knowledge of how it developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have several other books. You had, uh, only in English and Spanish, right? Do you have in English? Right, right, yeah. in Spanish. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So any principal out there or any teacher out there that, that want some, uh, uh, they could call uh, Allison or Sheila and, and they'll send, uh, they'll mail you, what, uh, 50, mm -hmm. 100, uh, mm -hmm. not 1,000, but just, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but, but they'll, mail, they'll send you to educate the kids. And also, once you get the book, if you want, I don't know if they could do that, but virtually they could have a session with your classroom mm -hmm. virtually. Uh, 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 I don't know what program they're using, but they could have lessons in your classroom about science because I know the teachers right now are doing virtually to the kids mm -hmm. and, and they're probably looking for activities to do with the kids or how to do it. Mm -hmm. Here's a perfect way for the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Great Chicago to come and help you teach your kids about STEM. Yes. Science. Technology, engineering, and math. Yeah. Now, we call it STEAM, too. They call it STEM or STEAM, mm -hmm. where STEAM, they included A, art. Arts, yes. In there. So, mm -hmm. so it, it's an opportunity to contact Allison or Sheila to find out how they could participate with you in your classroom mm -hmm. 
for the next session coming in because uh, uh, as Allison mentioned, they're, they're coming out to the kids that they teaching at home. Now everyone is going to teach at home. Mm -hmm. uh, Allison? Right. And we have different STEM speakers from engineering, accountants, chemists. We have the whole range of STEM speakers a lot of people don't know about. And we'll coordinate the schedule with our speaker. You just tell us what your interest is, how long they have, mm -hmm. and what time, and we'll figure it out. Uh, excellent. Now, uh, Sheila, uh, uh, what program are you going to use? You know, there's a lot of programs sure. out there. <laughs> and, and right now, people just don't know what program uh, to use, and that's what they're trying to figure out right now. You mean the program to do this, the uh, virtual? Yeah, virtual, yeah. Right now, what we're looking at is, I believe, a program called Zoom. Okay. Um, I believe we've, we're finding that a lot of schools have been using that program, and we feel that that is going to be our best bet to be able to give the type of experience that we think the students deserve to, to have in, in order to be able to engage with us and learn about what we do and to be able to get feedback from them. So, so we want the public to please, please call us. Yeah. <laughs> call the experts. Call the experts because we have experts in all the fields as it relates to treating wastewater because it takes a team. We are like a, a little village mm -hmm. that, as Allison mentioned, I'm glad she brought it up. We have lawyers. Yes. We have accountants. We have chemists. Explain the other people that we have, Allison biologists and microbiologists, boat captains. We have boats that pick up debris and help keep the waterways clean. We have procurement buyers, people who uh, figure out how to buy in large supplies. Uh, we have, well, we have photographers and videographers and writers. <laughs> We have people working in administrative positions. We have people who are actually out there designing things, working in CAD design. Um, you, I want to say you name it, we probably have it at the district, yeah. but I don't want to overstate <laughs> it. But we have quite a few roles playing there to help do the work that we do. And, and, and we want to go out and educate the kids. Mm -hmm. Our key here at the district is to educate the kids how to protect the public in health, yes, in the environment. Mm -hmm. We, we want to work on prevention. Mm -hmm. We do not want to, after it's all here, yes. then we try and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. It's prevention. Yes, definitely.